Hello everyone, I am Ravin. Today we are here is to talk about data preparation. Data preparation is actually involves six steps, which is gather, discover, cleanse, transform, enrich, and store. So first of all, gather the data. Finding the appropriate data is the first step in the data preparation process. Alternatively, something can be added ad hoc to an existing database. Next is discover and assess data. Each data set must be discovered once the data has been collected. Here, you'll obtain a better grasp on the data and learn what needs to be done for it to be of any use. Next is cleanse and validate the data. Cleaning up the data is generally the most time-consuming aspect of the data preparation, but it is essential for removing erroneous data and filling in gaps. Tasks that are critical here is include removing extraneous data and outliers, filling in missing values, confirming data to a standardized pattern, masking private or sensitive data entries, the next is transform and enrich data. If you are looking to achieve a specific result or make your data understandable, you are probably transforming your data. If you are looking to get more information out of your data, you are doing something called enriching it. And finally is store your data. Once the data is ready, it can be kept or sent into a third party program such as a business intelligence tool, allowing for processing and analysis. Next is how data is being divided. The data is divided into a smaller packet. The process is called S packet segmentation. Packet segmentation happens at layer 4 of the OSI model. The transport layer segmentation may be required when the data packet is larger than the minimum transmission unit supported by the network. Other than that, networks are inherently unstable and the information should be split into smaller chunks so that it has a better chance of being delivered into the intended recipient. Next is header. A header is added to each layer's data that it receives from the layer above it. The packets at each layer contain all of the information that has been transmitted from the previous layer. No information is lost. Enscapulation is the name given to the technique of maintaining data while attaching a new header. Packets at this level only contain data to be transferred, for example, part of a file being transferred during an FTP session. The transmission control protocol, TCP, or the user datagram protocol, UDP, maintains the data from the previous layer and adds a header to it before moving to the transport layer. As the packet moves up the stack, IP deems the TCP or UDP header and data to be data and adds an IP header to it. When it comes time for Ethernet or another network protocol to act as a network access layer, it will attach its own header to the IP packet and deliver to it. Segment. The upper levels send data to the transport layer, which receives it and processes it. By doing it so, it reduces the volume of data that is being received. Segmentation is the term for this procedure. It then produces a header for each segment of the data and attach it to the data itself. Frame. The header contains information that is necessary for the transition to take place. When de escapulation begins, the trailer contains information that helps to identify and remove faulty data packages. It is known as the frame. Once both pieces are joined, the physical layer receives the frames. Sequence Identifying segments belonging to the same group of subdivided data specifies order of data issue. It's also in the transport layer of OSI model. Address route. Any combination of protocols that govern 
the road that data takes as it travels from one network to another, including IP routing, can be grouped under the umbrella term IP routing. From the point of origin to the point of destination, data travels via a network of routers. MAC address and IP address For communications within a network segment, the Media Access Control address, MAC address, serves as a unique identification assigned to a network interface controller, NIC, for usage as an address. IEEE 802 networking technologies, including Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth, all have this as a frequent application practice. While an IP address, which is known as Internet Protocol Address, is a numerical label such as 192.0.2.1, connected to a computer network using the Internet Protocol as a communication medium. In addition to identifying network interfaces, an IP address can also be used for location-based services. Next is packet forwarding. Packet forwarding is the process of a networking component accepting a packet and transmitting it to its destination. For example, a router receives packets from host 1 attached network and forwards them to host on another attached network or to another router for further forwarding. Error control Detecting and retransmitting data that has been lost or corrupted during transmission is the goal of error control at the data connection layer. Errors must be spotted and corrected in any system that is considered reliable. Both the transport and the data connection layers are involved in error detection and repair. Handshake protocol The handshake protocol uses the public key infrastructure, PKI, and establish a shared symmetric key between the parties to ensure confidentiality and integrity of the communicated data. The handshake involves three phases, with one or more messages exchanged between client and server. Phase 1 starts with the client sending information regarding the algorithms and parameters that it can be handled, followed by phase 2, which is involve mutual authentication of client and server by exchanging their credentials. Phase 3 involves the client sending the shared key to the server. This is encrypted with the server's public key so that only the addressed server can decipher it. Next is TCP IP and UDP. When you're talking about computers and networks like the internet, you're probably thinking about the TCP IP protocol suite. As of now, TCP and IP serve as core protocols in the suite. Communications protocol UDP is generally used to construct low latency and loss tolerant connections between internet applications. UDP allows data to be sent even before the receiving party has agreed to accept it, which expedites communications. Routing. The process of choosing a path between two or more networks is known as network routing. Routing principles may be used to a wide range of networks, including everything from telecommunications to mass transit. It is routing that determines the routes used by IP packets. In networks that use packet switching such as the internet, Subnet and subnet address. A logical subdivision of an IP network is known as a subnetwork or subnet. When a network is split into many networks, it is termed subnetting. Using subnet addressing, many networks can share a single internet address. It is also feasible to partition a single network into many logical networks using 
TCP sub network, IP feature subnets. Next is how the data travel in binary and the cable used to travel. Transferring data through a cable uses the same principle as conducting electricity along a length of metal wire. At its most simplistic, data sent over a cable is converted into a binary code, a collection of ones and zeros. The device transmitting the data will send current along the cable at the two different voltage, with one voltage representing ones and the other is zeros. The device receiving the data will interpret the current as binary code and then convert back into the original format the data was before it was sent. The data, the cable is used to travel as fiber optic cable, which is fiber optic cable actually work in much the same way, but instead of transmitting electrons down a cable, they send pulse of light. Imagine turning a torch on and off. When the light is on, you are transmitting a one, and when it's off, you are transmitting a zero. Next is Network topology. A network topology refers to how various nodes, devices, and connections on your network are physically or logically arranged in relation to each other. Many factors influence the network's design more than anything else. It's crucial to smooth operation of your network. Choose the correct topology for your company's operating model to boost performance while making it easier to discover problems, repair mistakes, and better deploy resource throughout the network to ensure optimal network health. These are some most common type of network topology, which is point-to-point, -point, bus, ring, star, tree, mesh, the final is hybrid. Okay, so hi and assalamualaikum and a very good morning to my uh, lovely doctor, which is Dr. Anianti. So today uh, uh, we will discuss about uh, how does data flow uh, as a result of the OSI model from the transmitter data goes from layer 7 to layer 1 then uh, from layer 1 to layer 7 on the destination device an email application is the most basic example of communication on flow across the OSI model okay so next uh, the message is transferred to the presentation layer via a specified protocol when a sender hits send on an email program uh, SM or known as SMTP for outgoing email the presentation layer compresses the data before uh, sending it uh, this to the session layer which establish uh, a communication on channel between the sender's device and the outgoing server. Uh, then the message is sent to the transport layer which divides the data into segments before sending it to the network layer to be broken up into packets. After that, after that uh, the packets are transmitted from the network layer to the data link layer where they are further broken down uh, into frames uh, the frames are passed to the physical layer where the data is converted uh, to bit streams of 1 and zeros and uh, well, transmitted via a medium uh, such as wireless or wired networks okay uh, furthermore, uh, the procedure is reversed when the message reaches the intended recipient. Data is transferred from the physical layer to the application layer where it is translated from uh, bit string 1 and zeros to the uh, message that the receiver can see in his or her email software. 
uh, then uh, the process is repeated when a message is written to the sender and communication on travels down layer 1 from layer 7 and back up the OSI model when it reaches the recipient's devices okay so uh, I think uh, that's all from me for the B question so thank you again and uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh